You know, 7.5 notes. We are covering uh, angle pairs today. So we have previously filled this in. Angle is uh, two rays that share a common endpoint. Acute angle is an angle less than 90 degrees. An obtuse angle, an angle greater than 90 degrees. A right angle, an angle equal to 90 degrees and a straight angle, an angle equal to 180 degrees. Any questions on any of those? You guys are good with those? We're going to be using these terms quite a bit. Congruent angles, two angles that have equal measures. Two angles with equal measures. And angle bisector, did we cover that one? Angle bisector, okay. An angle bisector is a ray, line segment, or line that divides oops, an angle into two congruent angles. Basically, it cuts an angle in half. An angle bisector is a ray, most often a ray, but it could be a line segment or a line that cuts an angle in half. Bisect, cuts it in half. So, if we have angle A, B, C, ray B, D cuts angle A, B, C in half, meaning it creates two congruent angles. So now we have angle A, B, D is congruent to angle D, B, C. An angle bisector will cut an angle into two small, two smaller congruent angles. Make sense? Okay. Now let's get into some angle pairs. All right, adjacent angles. Two angles with a common ray. Okay, two angles that share a common ray. Okay, real simply, Use that same picture that I drew before. Oops, I changed it a little bit. So we can say that angle ABC and angle CBD are adjacent angles because they share ray BC. You can see it in both angle names. Adjacent means next to. Right over here is Mrs. Rent's classroom. Okay, we have adjacent classrooms because we share a wall. Okay, our classrooms are adjacent. We share this wall right here. Adjacent, next to. Questions on that? All right. Vertical angles. to opposite angles created by two intersecting lines.
two opposite angles created by two intersecting lines. Pretty simple. There's one line. Oh, I drew it on a long one. That's okay. Shoot. All right, well, we'll just do it right down here. You guys draw it up here, obviously. Okay. Two vertical angles are two opposite angles created by intersecting lines. Well, here are two intersecting lines, and you can see, hopefully, that it creates four angles. Okay? Angles one and angle three are vertical angles. Angle one and angle three are vertical angles, as is angle two and angle four are vertical angles. Okay, vertical angles are opposite each other. Vertical angles are congruent. Vertical angles are congruent, okay? We use vertical angles a ton. I think I feel like I always say this, but this is probably the most important thing you will learn today. Vertical angles are created by two intersecting lines. They are the opposite angles, one and three in this case, and two and four. Vertical angles are congruent. You need to burn that into your memories. Vertical angles are congruent. You will use that pretty much every day next year. Questions on that? Okay, let's move on to complementary angles. Okay, complementary angles. Two angles whose sum is 90 degrees. Two angles whose sum is 90 degrees. Okay, two angles that add up to 90 degrees. Two angles that add up to 90 degrees. Now, we could just have two angles like this, and we'll say this guy is 30, and this angle is 60 degrees. So they are a pair of complementary angles right there. Okay, that's a pair of complementary angles. The ones you guys are used to seeing look like this. We have a 90 degree angle and then another ray coming out of it. Maybe that's 20 degrees and 70 degrees. You're used to seeing complementary angles like this. Okay, it's a right angle with a ray, so that's um, breaking into two smaller angles. But complementary angles do not have to be adjacent angles. Right here, this is two complementary adjacent angles. Right here are just two complementary angles. If I've got a 55 degree angle on my paper and you've got a 35 degree angle on your paper, then they are complementary. They don't have to be on the same page. They don't have to be adjacent. They just have to add up to 90 degrees. Does that make sense? Okay, let's go on to supplementary angles. You guys know what supplementary angles are? What's that? Two angles whose sum equals, anybody? 180 degrees, that's right. So we could have These two angles are supplementary angles because their sum is 180 degrees. 
Okay, that's a possibility. Or we could have our next set of angles, a linear pair that happens to add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so they do not have to be adjacent angles. Again, I could have one here and one on the next page and they would be supplementary if their sum is 180 degrees. Supplementary simply means the two angles add up to 180 degrees. They do not have to be adjacent angles. Now our last term is adjacent supplementary angles. Okay. A linear pair is two adjacent supplementary angles. So this is an example of a linear pair. How do you draw a linear pair? You simply draw a line and you can draw a ray coming out of that line somewhere. So angle A, B, C angle A, B, C, and angle C, B, D are a linear pair. Two angles whose sum is 180 degrees and they share a ray. Two adjacent supplementary angles. How are we doing on that? Any questions? Okay. Let's turn the page and do some of these together. All right. Name an angle or angles in the diagram described by each of the following. We need a, uh, oops, let me go up a little bit. There we go. Use the diagram at the right. Is each statement true? Explain. Angle two and angle five are adjacent angles. Is that true or false? false. Are hearing some false? Any trues? No, that is false. They are not. They do not share a ray or side. They do not share a ray. Angles 2 and 5 are independent of each other. How about number 2? Angle 1 and angle 4 are vertical angles. Okay. All right. That is true because, remember, vertical angles are created by two intersecting lines. Those are two intersecting lines there. Angle 1 and 4, they're opposite angles created by intersecting lines, so that is true. What else do we know about vertical angles? What are they? This is really important, guys. Vertical angles are congruent. Congruent. Did I hear cool? No? Oh, equal. I said they're cool. I do think they're pretty cool, but no. Okay, measure, oh, I better not get rid of our diagram. Angle four and angle five are complementary. False. False, what are they? Supplementary. That's right. Sup. They're supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees. Can you guys name two angles that are complementary? Four and three, good job. They add up to 90 degrees. They happen to be adjacent. They don't have to be adjacent, but... Okay, so let's see. I'll, I'll throw a really tricky one at you from see how much knowledge you have. Angle four and three are complementary angles. There's one other set of complementary angles up there. Anybody know what they are? You're like the star of the day if you can come up with that. Oh, one and four? 
One and three. One and three, there you go. Okay, so four and three add up to 90 degrees. And four and one are vertical angles, which means they're congruent, which means that one and three have to be complementary angles. Let's just make up some numbers. Let's say that angle four is 40 degrees, correct? Well, if angle four is 40 degrees, that means angle three has to be 50 degrees. But remember, if angle four and angle one are vertical angles, they have to be congruent, which means angle one would have to equal 40 degrees, which now means angle one and angle three are complementary as well. Does that make sense? Okay, that's the kind of stuff you're gonna be doing in geometry. All right, let's move on down. Name an angle or angle in the diagram that describes each of the following. Complementary to BOC. Okay, well here's BOC. What angle is complementary to BOC? What angle is complementary to this guy? BOA. BOA, that's right. Because angle COA is a right angle. How do we know it's a right angle? Well, we have to assume some, not assume some things, but we know that DOA is a straight angle. So that means all the way around here is 180. Well, if DOC is taken up 90 degrees, then we know COA is 90 degrees as well. All right, so that's why you have to know all these terms. And you have to be able to use them all and apply them all. I know that COA is 90 degrees because I know that angle AOD is a straight angle. And if DOC is 90 degrees, then COA has to be 90 degrees. Okay. How about supplementary to DOB? Here's DOB right here. What angle is supplementary to DOB? There's actually two. BOA. BOA is one. Now somebody else come up with the other one. What's supplementary to DOB? EOD. EOD, EOD, and DOB. EOD. Where am I here? There we go. And notice, well, it doesn't really matter because they're they don't have to be adjacent. Okay, adjacent and supplementary to AOC. Here's AOC. What angle is adjacent and supplementary to it? Anybody? We talked about it already. What angle is adjacent and supplementary to this right angle here? How about COD? Okay, they add up to 180 degrees. 90 plus 90 is 180. Okay, use the diagram for exercise seven and eight. Solve for X. All right, so this we talked a lot about last week about segment addition postulate. Now we have angle addition postulate. So you notice we have the measure of angle AOB as four X plus one. And we have the measure of angle BOC as 2x plus 15. And we have the measure of angle AOC as 8x plus 8. What you have to realize is angle AOB plus angle BOC equals angle, or I should say is congruent to angle AOC. Looks like my pen is dying here. It is dead. Oh, there we go. Okay, so what we're saying is the measure of angle AOB plus the measure of angle BOC is equal to the measure of angle AOC. So we can set this one up as 4x minus 1. If you want to use parentheses, you can. Plus 2x plus 15 equals 8x plus 8. When we combine like terms, we get 6x plus 14 equals 8x plus 8. 
If I subtract 8x and I subtract 14, I end up with negative 2x equals negative 6, which means x equals 3. And then we could plug that back in to find the measures. To save a little time on notes, we're not going to plug that back in. We'll just do it in our heads to see if we wanted A, O, B, it would be 12 minus 1 or 11. Okay. If we wanted B, O, C, it would be 2 times 3 plus 15, which is 6 plus 15 or 21. And I'm going to assume that A, O, C should equal 32. Let's see. 8 times 3 is 24. Did I say 33? 32? Uh, 8 times 3 is 24, and 24 plus 8 is 32. 32, and that is correct. Okay? All right, let's take a look at COD, BOC, BOD. Number 8 is basically the same problem. It's angle addition postulate. COD, COD plus... BOC equals BOD. So it's this angle plus this angle equals the whole thing. We're going to skip over that guy. Okay, angle ABC and angle EBF are a pair of vertical angles. What do we know about vertical angles? What? Vertical angles are congruent. So angle ABC and angle EBF are vertical angles. The measure of ABC is 3x plus 8. The measure of EBF is 2x plus 48. What is the measure of ABC and EBF? Well, because they're vertical angles, we know their measures are equal. So we can set them equal to each other. We solve for x. We get x equals, looks like, 40. So what is the measure of angle ABC? How could we find that? If X is 40 and ABC is 3X plus 8, what could we do? Couldn't we plug in 40 for X? 3 times 40 is 120 plus 8 is 128. If we did it right, the measure of angle EBF should be the same. Two times 40 plus 48. Two times 40 is 80. 80 plus 48 is 128. So what would we do here to solve for this guy? Let's just set this up. K or JKL and MNP are complementary angles. JKL is 2x minus 3. And the measure of angle N MNP is 5x plus 2. What are the measures of JKL and MNP? What could we do to figure those two guys out? Complementary angles. What would we do? Would we set them equal to each other? Would we add them together and set them equal to something else? What would we do here with complementary angles? What's the definition of complementary angles? Anybody? It's right there on your paper. Yeah, turn the page, look it up. It's okay, that's what we give you those notes for. It's not cheating. Two complementary angles are equal to 90, aren't they? Thank you. So couldn't we add these two guys together and set them equal to 90? So 2x minus 3 plus 5x plus 2 equals 90. Or 7x minus 1 equals 90, which means 7x equals 91, which means x equals, what is it equal, 17? Nope, 13. And then we can plug it back in to find each of those measures. This is not our answer. X is rarely your answer in geometry. I'm not going to plug it back in. Well, let's go ahead and do it real quick because 
the measure of angle JKL is 2 times 13 minus 3, which means 26 minus 3 is 23 degrees. So the measure of angle JKL is 23 degrees. Without plugging in, without plugging in, can you guys tell me how I could find the measure of angle NMNP? If we know the measure of JKL is 23 degrees, how could I find the measure of MNP? What? Yeah, just subtract from 90. Because they're complementary, they have to add up to 90. So if I subtract 23 from 90, I end up with 67, right? MNP has to be 67 degrees. We should probably, if this was a test, I would definitely go 5 times 13 is, uh, what is that, 50, 75? 65, sorry, 65 plus 2 is 67, so it worked. Okay, if PN is an angle bisector, what is an angle bisector again? It, what does it do to an angle when it bisects an angle? If you were had a pizza and you were going to bisect it, you would do what? Cut it in half, right? So a bisector cuts an angle in half. So we know the measure of angle MPN is 3x plus 26. And we know the measure of NPO is 6x minus 1. How could we find the, how could we find the value of x? Any ideas? PN is an angle bisector. It cuts the angle in half. So how could we find the measure of, well, first, how could we find the value of X? If PN cuts this big guy in half, what do we know? What does half mean? If you cut a pizza in half and you had to share it with your brother, and you cut it in half, would that be fair? Why would it be fair? Both sides are equal, right? So we can say MPN is congruent or equal to NPO. They're congruent, equal. So we can set them equal to each other. We can set their measures equal to each other and solve for X. So X equals nine which means the measure of angle MPO, that's the whole thing, should equal twice the measure of angle MPN, which means 2 times 3 times 9 plus 26. So the measure of MPO equals, I don't know if you guys can still see it down here, 106 degrees. So guys, here's the important part. You have to use all these definitions, angle bisector, 